Howdy, it's Kyle talking about New Mexico. It's a state that's not often discussed, and when it is, it's usually in a negative connotation. There's been some discussion recently as to why New Mexico hasn't had the same economic fortunes as its neighbors, namely Arizona to the west and Colorado to the north, and why it hasn't had the same population growth as those two states. So in this video, I'm going to talk about New Mexico, some of the aspects that makes it unique, and why there hasn't been the same type of population growth there as either Arizona or Colorado. This video is not going to be a full-on state profile like I've done for many states, just more of a podcast-style discussion of the state. A few years ago, I posted a video called Why New Mexico is My Favorite State, and I'll leave a link to that in the description and one of those you know things up there if you want to check that out. But let's talk about why New Mexico is a lot different than Arizona and Colorado in terms of its population growth and economy. I'm going to start off with talking about some basic stats of the states I'm going to be discussing. For New Mexico, at the 2010 census, the population was 2,059,000. At the 2020 census, it was 2,115,000. That's a growth of 2.8% over the decade, and right now it ranks 37th in the U.S. For Arizona, at the 2010 census, the population was about 6.4 million people, and at the 2020 census was about 7.2 million. That's a growth of 11.9% over the decade, and currently Arizona ranks 14th in the U.S. For Colorado, at the 2010 census, the population was 5,029,000. At the 2020 census, it was 5,773,000. That's a growth of 15% over the decade, and right now it ranks 21st in the country in population. So New Mexico has obviously grown a lot less than either Arizona or Colorado in the past decade or so, and even if you include also Utah and Texas, it's grown way less than those two as well. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about the New Mexico economy. There are many different stats you can look at for personal finances. You can look at household income or GDP per capita. You can make cost of living adjustments for various parts of the country. But no matter how you look at it, New Mexico is one of the poorest states in the country. It's the poorest state in the western U.S. and is often hanging out with West Virginia and Mississippi at the bottom of all those economic categories. It's a very blue-collar state with the leading parts of the economy being energy and agriculture. In terms of energy, New Mexico is the third largest producer of crude oil in the U.S. It produces 9% of all U.S. crude. For natural gas, it ranks 9th in the U.S., producing about 5% of the U.S. total. Most people would be surprised to learn that New Mexico is number 9 in the country in terms of dairy. And with New Mexico's economy being based largely on blue-collar endeavors, blue-collar wages tend to be a little bit lower than some of the more high-tech type jobs you see in Colorado and Arizona. Many of the highest paying jobs in New Mexico are associated with the Los Alamos National Laboratory and the Sandia National Laboratories. This is where you have a lot of nuclear research, nuclear energy stuff going on, and all kinds of real secretive stuff as well. And even though these are really high paying, highly skilled jobs, they're also fairly small in number relative to the state. So with a household income right around $50,000, it ranks about 46th in the U.S., very low, very poor. So that must be why no one's moving there. It's poor. But of course, that's not the case. I live in Tennessee, a state that's very poor, is growing a lot. I lived in South Carolina, a poor state that's growing. Idaho is a poor state that's growing a lot. Mississippi, Kentucky, West Virginia, poor states that aren't really growing much. You have Washington, Colorado, Massachusetts, Minnesota, wealthy states growing. California, New York, New Jersey, wealthy states going down in population. So there is no correlation between the wealth of that state and whether or not it's growing in population. The next thing people want to talk about in terms of New Mexico is the very high crime rate. And indeed, New Mexico does have, I believe, either the highest or the second highest crime rate at the state level in the entire country. Two things on that. One, nobody cares about statewide crime rates. That's a worthless statistic. I can't really think of any scenario where the statewide crime rate is a useful stat. And I would really like to meet the person that would say, you know, I would move to Grand Rapids, but man, that crime rate in Flint is keeping me away from Michigan. So people may or may not move to a city or a neighborhood within that city because of crime, but no one's going to move or not move to a state because of statewide crime rate. And again, I'll use Tennessee as an example. If New Mexico was one or two in the country in terms of highest crime rate, Tennessee is that other one they're kind of going back and forth with. And again, Tennessee has lots of growth. Ford just chose Memphis or an area outside of Memphis for its big EV plant area. So it isn't the crime or poverty that causes places to grow or not grow. There are other things going on. So I want to talk about the reasons why people relocate to a new place. 
The number one reason is going to be something economic or financial, maybe for a job or you're following a spouse or a loved one who got a job somewhere else. Or maybe you're retired and after all those years of hard work, you can finally move wherever you want. Nowadays, we have a lot of people that can do what they do wherever so they can pack up and move to wherever they want. So I'm going to run down those reasons and why Arizona and Colorado have many more advantages in those regard over New Mexico and what leads to those states having much higher population growth. In terms of climate, people often compare Arizona and New Mexico because they're both these big boxes in the southwest, but the climates are actually quite different. Although they're both dry desert, a good chunk of Arizona is lower elevation, whereas most of New Mexico is higher elevation. And why that makes a difference is a pretty good majority of the population in Arizona lives in the Phoenix metropolitan area, which is lower elevation desert where you have much higher temperatures in the summer, and it stays pretty mild during the winter. Now compare that to Albuquerque at 5,000 feet, doesn't get super hot during the summer, but it does get rather cold during the winter, many freezing nights, even a little bit of snow. And Santa Fe at 7,000 feet has really nice summers, but gets kind of cold during the winter and a decent amount of snow. So if you're retired and looking to get away from the cold, you're not going to move to Albuquerque or Santa Fe, but Phoenix looks pretty nice. A lot of older retirees are into golf and Arizona has a huge golf culture. And also Arizona, this has a lot more tourism. So many people visit the state, they go to the Grand Canyon, they go to Sedona or Flagstaff and they see, wow, this is a really cool place. I might want to move here or retire here. Another factor that's led Arizona to grow a lot more is the aerospace industry. Raytheon Aerospace has a huge presence in the state. The Tucson area is nicknamed the Optics Valley because of the huge optics industry there. This area is home to the Kitt Peak National Observatory. There are many other astronomical observatories in the state. Phoenix is the western hub for American Airlines and all the things associated with that are located right there in Phoenix. And you also have much more of a high-tech sector in Phoenix as well with a very large company being on semiconductors. But let's be honest, the number one reason why Arizona has grown so much in recent years is proximity to Southern California. For the past 50 years, people from Southern California have been moving to Arizona for whatever reason. Arizona's always been cheaper, lower tax, and people wanting to get away from more expensive areas on the coast and pay less taxes have considered Arizona. This is nothing new, so if you live in Arizona, you're probably a first, second, or maybe at most third generation Arizonan. A very good percentage of that population are people that came from the LA or San Diego areas in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and up to today. But because these people are from Southern California, they still want to be close to home, close to family, maybe get to the beach very easily. So Arizona, with a climate that retirees like more, more big companies headquartered there, more aerospace and proximity to Southern California has led Arizona to grow a lot more than New Mexico. Well, then what about Colorado? It's not next to California. It doesn't have that warm desert climate of Phoenix. Way back in the day, the federal government chose Denver as the site of the Mint. And as a result of that, a financial sector sprung up in the Denver area. And the days before the worldwide interwebs, what time zone you were in was very important for the financial sector. So the major banking cities of the U.S. have been New York, Chicago, Denver, and San Francisco, one for each of the main time zones. So there's a big financial economy there, many banks and other financial institutions headquartered there. And also with the federal government are a lot of high-tech, really nerdy research labs in the Denver-Boulder area. It's home to NCAR, which is the National Center for Atmospheric Research, and overall the University of Colorado is just about the top dog in the country for Earth and atmospheric sciences. There's a lot of stuff with climate forecasting, water quality, and geology, and all of that nerdy Earth and atmospheric science stuff has really sprung up a large part of the economy for the Denver metro area. Also similar to Phoenix, Denver also has a major aerospace industry. You have a major Air Force presence in Colorado, specifically the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs. And Denver is one of the busiest airports in the country. It's the western hub for United. So now I want to go back to New Mexico. Why wouldn't a company want to move there that could attract people? This is just my hypothesis, but with New Mexico's largest sectors of the economy being energy and dairy, there's less need for highly skilled workforces. People in New Mexico can fill those jobs without having to have a very high level of formal education. So as a result, you're less likely to have high-tech stuff or aerospace or biomedical type things relocate or establish a presence in your state because you have a lower number of people that have a high level of formal education. So now I want to bring up the possibility of what might be a controversial reason why people aren't moving to New Mexico. I'm not trying to stir up controversy, but I do think this is worth mentioning. Hawaii and New Mexico are the only two states in the country that have a minority majority. 
And even though the indigenous population of the state is only 10%, it does have a huge impact on the culture. So in New Mexico, Anglo culture is usually a backseat to both Hispanic and indigenous culture. It's the most bilingual state in the country with about two thirds of the population there speaking both English and Spanish. So in the constitution of the state of New Mexico, it is officially a bilingual state, English and Spanish. Now certainly all the major things going on in the state are operated in English, the government, the schools, universities and whatnot, but it is officially bilingual. But it's still most definitely an English first state. Everybody there speaks English, it's just that about half the people in the state speak Spanish at home. And I'm not trying to stir up anything, but I do think a lot of Anglos feel uncomfortable in areas where they're the minority. I certainly hope that's not the case, and again, this is just a hypothesis and I have no real numbers to back this up. I think oftentimes New Mexico is treated like the state version of places like Cleveland or St. Louis where people just want to focus on the negative things. And when the negative things are bad, they often tend to overlook the really good things. But for New Mexico, the best things about the state are really hard to quantify. It's really easy to go on Wikipedia and look at the stats, but when you go there and experience the place for yourself, you'll see it's just a wonderful state. So to sum up, New Mexico is a terrible, disgusting place full of a bunch of Mexicans and savages. The hot sauce is so much, it'll burn your intestines. So yeah, don't move there. So that's my take on New Mexico and why it hasn't had the same population growth as its neighbors. It's my favorite state in the country and one that I do believe is very underrated. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve and subscribe to this channel if you're interested in learning more about geography from a nerdy perspective. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out. I'd like to give a special thanks to my superior patrons for their support. If you're interested in purchasing a pin for the viewer pin map that I really need to update or just to support the channel, check out my Patreon page, link in the description. And as always, thank you very much.